All right. Okay. Good afternoon, um, Annika. Thank you for being willing to come into a couple of moments of conversation with me and with us today about your consultant and facilitation practice. Absolutely. How <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, well, we've been chatting before this, and I've just appreciated, um, uh, ex we were just talking about inspiration, how we can connect around what's on fire as far as aliveness and vitality. Mm -hmm. And so in this moment, I really feel that. And I can see that in your eyes and your smile. So, mm -hmm. um, some, you know, in the heaviness of these times and the heaviness of sometimes the work, mm -hmm. I think sometimes we can um, forget that there's so many ways that we can connect and share in this time. So I'm excited to be here with you. I'm really curious about what you're curious about. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you. Thanks for leading in with that. So I'm going to kind of cut to the chase here a little bit. Yesterday, I was at a uh, Dr. Martin Luther King annual rally out here in Seattle um, that starts at my former high school. And I took my daughter and I heard one of the speakers reiterate a quote of Dr. King's that is one of my favorites of his. And I would like to start off with that and quickly connect it into our conversation. Great. Um, for me, it is a head and heart quote. See how it resonates for you. Uh, power without love is reckless and abusive. And love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. And justice at its best is power correcting everything that stands against love. And I love that, that paradox of power without love and love without power. Mm -hmm. And there's something about the interactions that I've been honored to have with you. And when I've seen you at work that I think pulls on certain chords of me and, and pulls me into this quote. Most recently, it was for me a really interesting thought piece you wrote for our newsletter, looking at the idea of leadership vision and looking at the paradox in a sense of how do you deal with forces, people, entities that might be in opposition to that. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping we might spend a couple moments today. Um, my curiosity really centers around where some of that inspiration came from and, and some of your words and, and, and answers to those questions. And I wonder if you might peel back a couple layers with me on that today. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. I love, I love that quote. It goes, goes in deep for me too. Um, you know, the first thing that comes is like that, uh, oh, what would you say? Maybe like a, I don't know, codependent love that isn't really love hmm. when we aren't bringing ourselves into it. Um, and then also the domination that can happen when we're connected to ourselves and our power, but we're not connected to others. And how to, you know, so my, my greatest challenge and my greatest practice right now is how do I maintain a connection to my own integrity, values, and perspective, and not collapse around that, mm. but leave lots of space to connect and be curious about difference. And I think in the past, I fluctuated between that. Mm. I either could be connected to myself and be and bring that, which might be power without love, mm. or I'd be in this kind of what I would say almost like a false love, like be so connected and empathetic with what somebody else is bringing, but lose track of what's real and true for me. So my practice right now um, has been, how do I hold both? Mm. And especially when there's a difference that challenges my own integrity or challenges something that I hold really um, dear or true, mm. how do I lean in and know that there's gold in that difference? And can I choose to prize everything somebody's bringing to me, no matter how challenging, like not falsely, but truly go after there's something here. Mm -hmm. And so I've spent the last, oh, four or five months in a, a relational leadership course where it's all practice that, and then, and then gotten to implement it as some of the most challenging areas of my own personal life, professional life. Mm -hmm. um, so that quote feels like it's embedded in that practice mm -hmm. um, for me. Um, yeah, I guess that's where, my first response. 
Thank you, Annika. And actually, you you included, which I would love to read as well, a quote in your original thought piece that instantly triggered me to that Dr. King quote, which is what brought us full circle to this moment. Uh, your desire to tame everything, you desire to tame everything, but if you stand still and feel for a moment, you would know how to everything yearns to be wild. Yeah. And I, look at that, that. I love that paradox too of of liberation and structure and uh i think about that even as a, back back to the idea of that and, and being a consultant or facilitator what is your vision when you step into a room um particularly with the corporate client do you have a conceptual vision is there a somatic vision which i'm just learning what those terms mean is it a, like how what does that mean for you to envision stepping into that space and and going there yeah I love that you brought that quote in. I'm actually getting tattooed right here next Saturday. Everything yearns to be wild. I've waited like, I don't know, 30 years to get my second tattoo. And that really feels true to me. Um, and I think at its core to me, it says there's a self beyond all the layers of conditioning, culturally, familial, social. There's a self that's ever expanding and wants to be discovered in every single one of us. And in some ways, the further we get away from that self, at least it's true for me, mm -hmm. the more sick and dysfunctional I am and the more, less room I have for difference. Mm -hmm. The further I, away from my own uniqueness or my own experience or specific soul shape. Um, so uh, sorry, yeah. that, that, I love I heard a, a, a black feminist, actually, Dr. Maxine Mims, who started a college back here in Washington State, mm -hmm. wants that people particularly um, uh, in well, she didn't use the term insiders, but particularly mm -hmm. maybe people that are colonizers or people yeah. that have privilege should really learn how to exotify themselves so they don't abusively exotify others for what and then turn that into some kind of you know, twisted thing. So I love the idea of you finding that within yourself and value yeah. that. So your partnership goes deeper. Yeah. I mean, that's been the core of this work. Hmm. You know, when I first started doing anti-racism work, I, I actually took a couple years away from my awake at work, corporate mindfulness, hmm. um, uh, work after, uh, some black women and Latinx folks in a Gates Foundation session, we were talking about authentic leadership and they brought forward like, who gets to be authentic? I don't get to. I start code switching as soon as I hit the door. And it was the first time I really was like, wow, is what I'm teaching for everyone and informed. So in that process, I would say there was a couple of years of like death, like who am I outside of uh, my whiteness? Who am I without what that's afforded me and all, uh, other advantages while also having that touch my own trauma? Mm -hmm. um, so, and as I continue in this work, I just get friggin' freer and freer to go to go do be in the context of integrity of, of a greater justice. It's not just like go do whatever I want without awareness of others and culture, mm -hmm. but I've realized like so many things. I feel the most free that I've ever felt now, almost 54 years old of my own trauma. And it's all been through doing my own personal work specifically around race. And the gift that WMFDP has, has given me has been more around gender awareness that had been more invisible to me than race. Um, so all of that said, I'm getting to discover my own, did you say exoticism? Yeah, or yes. Yeah, yeah. you're well, you said uniqueness, you said that we have to learn how yeah. to find our own uniqueness. And it thought me back to this yeah, other thought yeah. in my life, you know, that term of exotifying oneself, same thing. Right? I think yeah. it's really true. I think that's some of the greatest collective healing, like, you know, Oni, and I know many other social justice greats have said, you know, we get free together or not at all, or some or we're not free until we're all free. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's some of the untapped gold that's in it for every single individual that engages in this work is there's a greater freedom then there's the gift of not missing out on who you really are outside of who culture has told you to be and history has told you to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that if I go into a session, I'm listening for where's the gold of liberation mm -hmm. of an awareness that would great bring, of course, greater partnerships and equity, but also where's the aliveness? What's here right now 
that wants our attention, our exploration, our focus that would lead to a greater liberation and connection for the whole group. So thank you for uh, that. Yeah. I would love to ask you the kind of flip end of that question as a way of kind of um, bringing, bringing some summit to our brief, but I would say already uh, exhilarating, or maybe that's, <laughs> no, that's not the kind of vocabulary, brief but vibrant conversation yeah. we're having. Um, yeah. so on the flip side of that, right, on the flip side of envisioning hmm. yourself as being body and light that wants to step into liberating and connecting space where energy is present and how do you infuse your energy into that and how do you pull that energy out of others to you know be a conduit to something even bigger liberation i think was the word you used yeah. um how what how do you deal with forces of opposition whether maybe it's uh myself and other men you know mm -hmm. or on or whether it's yourself and stuff that comes from within or whether it's clients in the room what what is opposition to you yeah and how do you how do you dance with that energy yeah well that's something that i just i could say in the last six months has started to get more skilled at because i think before i would be more threatened and i'd threaten back mm -hmm. I, I i would kind of you know puff up i guess i would say or totally collapse and now what i'm learning to do is uh, and it really is a mindset shift but a skill um, shift is to dispend all judgment mm -hmm. and go and prize everything like so you think that this mindfulness stuff is soft and fluffy and bullshit and doesn't really get to the heart of it. I get that. I agree. You know, like to really lean in instead of like, you know, get, you know, lean back or collapse or puff up. Like, how do I relate, actually relate and explore that difference and know that if I have a connection to myself, that doesn't have to get threatened. And I can always render or bring what I have into the conversation me prizing what you've got for me doesn't mean I agree. Mm -hmm. It just means I'm choosing to relate to you, right? And prize what's there and know that there's some gold there. There's something I can learn. So I, I have done that in some of my most challenging relationships, like my relationship with my mother has been healed by really choosing that. And also to realize that my relationship with Noah lives inside of me. I'm responsible for it. And what is that relationship I'm having with you? And if I want it to change outside, how do I change it here first? So, you know, that's some of it is like, I've learned, especially with white men that might bring a challenge to me um, around this work. I think of a board member I, I recently worked with and I, they might be bringing contempt for the work or for me, but I was returning the contempt. Mm -hmm. So what's that showing? So I'm learning now, how do I prize the contempt when it comes? and also be able to say a strong no and set a boundary if i need to too mm. self-empowerment and love or love of self and love and power being willing mm -hmm. to empower others i love that balance you just demonstrated coming back to that quote right um Annika, in our final moments, any anything else on your heart and head you'd love to share, knowing that this is a, a primarily a, a form that goes to our other consultants, but it goes kind of through our whole company. Any other words on your practice in the final seconds or moments before we close? Yeah, out? no, I just look forward to connecting. I look forward to bringing some of these skills and in, in how I relate to you and others in the in the company, how I start to build better partnerships. I now have room to grow in that. Mm -hmm. And I look forward for us to all building our capacity to be with strong difference because I don't think that it's going to stop. And in many ways, the more we can keep that vital difference alive and in our awareness and honored, I think we're going to navigate a lot better together. So I'm, I'm grateful to be in the conversation. Thanks for inviting me. As am I. Thanks for receiving the invite and thanks for learning and educating me, yeah. um, learning with me and educating me. So thank you, Annika, for your time. And we look forward to sharing this piece with everyone in the next newsletter. Talk soon.